This week in the podcast for the new All Age Comic Books for the week of January 8, 2020, Casper MLP Spider-Man Dead Max Comics. It's the it's the spiritual, slightly older sibling to Dogman, Doctor Who, Albert Einstein, that's right, and lots of superheroes. Hey, hey, and welcome to Daddy Mojo. It's the podcast where we'll talk about parenting, all-age comic books, toys, and more. Now, here's your host, Trey Burley. It is New Comic Book Day. That's right, it's the the second. It's the second New Comic Book Day of 2020. Happens every Wednesday. And thankfully, things are are set forth correctly on the uh, the comic book world. And this week, there are lots of really cool all-age comic books. And what is different from this week uh, to the previous two weeks, A, it's not a holiday, and that's pretty awesome, actually, the past three weeks. Um, It's not a holiday, and there's a wide variety of comic books or graphic novels for kids in elementary school all the way through high school. Uh, Let's jump right into it with uh, the classics. I say classics. It is a classic. It's a new classic in that this is a new story from a classic character. It's got Wendy, that red-headed devil. I forgot his name. It's Casper and all of his little friends. Hot Stuff, um, that's who it is. Man, when I was a kid, I loved this comic. Um, It was neat because I don't know why, but I was never able to buy this comic book. I don't know if my parents thought that Casper was uh, (laughs) evil or bad or, I don't know, that I wouldn't turn out to be a good human if I read Casper. But this is just for kids. It really is. It's not going to go much past elementary school. um, And any kid in elementary school is going to dig this. And this is a miniseries. And this is what's really cool with some of the better comic book properties now is that they, they are not doing full month, month, month stories or issues. The big ones are, like Looney Tunes and Scooby-Doo. They're still, they're still one of each of those uh, kicking around. But some of the smaller properties, like Casper, they're doing cool miniseries. This is issue number three of four, and uh, American Mythology Productions puts out this miniseries. Even from looking at the, the cover of uh, Casper's Spooksville, it's got that classic vibe where you can see on the cover, you see the four main anti-heroes, uh, Casper, Wendy, Hot Stuff. But you've got the little TV imprint uh, of the four people in their own little television blurb on the cover. It's difficult to describe unless you're an old school fan. Then you know what I'm talking about. Picture like a a one-eighth shaped television shot. And that's what you have on the uh, the cover of Casper's Spooksville. Uh, Issue three of four is out. Who's going to like this? Kids in middle school. Some kids in elementary, uh, sorry, kids in, (laughs) reverse that, (laughs) easily distracted by shiny objects. Kids in elementary school are going to like this. If you're in middle school, yeah, you might like it. It's going to demo young, so it could be your reading comfort food. Take it as it were, and you old school Casper fans, you'll like that if that's your cup of tea. Uh, It's going to retail for $4. Buy it through some links, and you can buy it for just over $3. Hint, save money. Um... One of the comic books, this is one of the monthly series that I failed to mention a moment ago, that comes out monthly, that does a bang-up job of producing quality stories, and is very popular. you got to maintain the balance, because people got to buy it, people have to read it, and enjoy it, and it's this, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, scoff if you will, but kids in elementary school love this comic book, and this is issue number 85. Um, so it is cranking out this title from, uh, IDW Publishing. It is going to skew much more to boy, to much more to girls than boys. But when you're that age, i.e. in elementary school, you'll read it and have fun and look at some of the stuff and say, oh, this is just a girl's comic. And for the most part, it's gonna, it's gonna skew heavily towards girls. Like more than 80%. I go into our elementary school library to either volunteer or deliver books and you can get a really good vibe as to what the kids are reading. Um, girls mainly read this. Another title that's really popular in elementary school library book in ele- elementary school libraries is Looney Tunes and Sonic the Hedgehog. Both those those two latter titles they are equally as attractive to boys and girls. 
So you girls this week, my little pony, Friendship is Magic, uh, issue 85. It's out this week, so get your get your pony on and go get it. This title skews also. It's, it's one of the rare comic books in the all-age comic book kind of descriptor that skews young and old. This is Marvel Action Avengers, and IDW Publishing has been partnering with Marvel Comics for this imprint from IDW Publishing, where IDW brings in some of the Marvel Comics superheroes and lets them do their own stories. And I was speaking to somebody in the publishing, in the comic publishing world, and I asked, how did this, how did this joint venture come about? And they said, basically, Marvel was aware that IDW Publishing did kid comics much better than they did. I'm paraphrasing to an extent. But that Marvel was also aware that they had so many cool superheroes that could demo down and not be cheesy, not be campy, not water down the action or the street cred of the heroism that these characters possess. Thus, uh, the Marvel action imprint that IDW Publishing puts out was put forth. Uh, This is Marvel Action Avengers, issue number nine. It maintains the action in a way that is great for elementary school kids, but also maintains its cool factor to where middle school kids can read it and be like, yeah, I'm reading The Avengers. That's cool. And it really is. It's a fun comic with realistically drawn characters and lots of action, but it's not graphic in any way. So if you're thinking, my elementary school kid is not going to be okay with this, uh, they are, and they'll really enjoy it. Case in point, our eight-year-old likes most of the Marvel action series that's uh that's part of this venture and it's great fun like black panther has his own uh strip uh iron man this is the avengers though his own strip (laughs) i speak like it's the 80s and it's a newspaper it's not hey how'd you hear the podcast Uh, how'd you hear about it if you would share it that would be great because man lots of parents out there don't know enough about all age comic books they think there's nothing to it They think that it's only one or two titles, when in reality, each week, a dozen to two dozen comic books come out that are going to be great for kids in elementary school and up. So share it, if you would, hashtag DaddyMojo or hashtag AllAgeComicBooks, and we can share it up and, you know, get some kids reading. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is about, because what I did, I didn't like reading when I was a kid. And part of that was because I kept getting books as a present from people who didn't know me. And they were all these dopey books, man. I was like, what do you, I don't want to read about people underwater. You know, this is not cool. Um, once I finally got into things that I wanted to read, though, man, I was a ravenous reader. And sure, it started out with comic books. But then it branched out into into legitimate kind of five, seven hundred books. I have Atlas Shrugged, things like that, and you know other books that are big and voluminous that are still here in my uh, my library. Case in point, I remember reading this one when I was a kid uh, in the early '80s. I think it was. This is uh, Dollar Comics, DC Comics has kind of jumped on the the bandwagon that Marvel Comics started a while ago by reprinting some of the really cool issues, or maybe one or two comic books from titular storylines. This one is the Brave and the Bold, issue number 197. And you look at the artwork, and it's straight up early early 80s, maybe even late 70s, just gauging from the artwork. But I know issue-wise, it's issue 197, so it's from the early 80s. This one features Batman and Catwoman, and it's back in the day when, oh, are they a couple, are they not? You know, and that, that was all kind of contrived, but this was the launching point for Batman Catwoman number one. That's what it was. Are they going to reprint this in modern time? I don't know. Kind of hope not, because I was never really one on that, like, yeah, Catwoman's, I don't know. I'll rile the Catwoman people out there. It's only a dollar, though, so that that's the point to this. It's only a dollar, and that is great. Go back to modern comics, and what's uh, what's a new popular superhero for kids in middle school and up is uh, Spider-Man. And as our kids start to venture into middle school, I see just how amazingly popular, no pun intended there, uh, amazing Spider-Man is. Uh, it's one of the... Su- it's. I mean, for a while, Spidey's always been the superhero that hit 
teens and kids hard in that yeah he's kind of he's one of us sure maybe he's in college maybe he's in yeah maybe he's in high school who knows miles morales he's a little more my age it's done so much for it especially since multiverse came out and it's on netflix now and our kids are just we watching re-watching that once every every couple of weeks because that's a great movie and the sequel has been announced to that in case you haven't heard from sony entertainment good move there Back to the comic book form. This is the Spideyverse, uh, issue number 37. Um, and this is going to be appropriate, I'll say, for middle school and up. Even those upper elementary school kids will be okay with it. Some of the action may be a little a little much for some parents to stomach for some of their younger kids. Would I let my 10-year-old read this? Yes, I would. Um, and it's great fun. Amazing Spider-Man. Because it's a great comic book and really one of the timeless uh, superheroes for kids. DC is also doing something cool. I mentioned the Dollar Comics a moment ago. They are reprinting and have new stories in these. And you've, if you've been to your comic book store lately, you've seen the Giant. Uh, it's a whole. It's a whole imprint. I mean, it seems like a whole cottage cheese industry that DC Comics is doing, where they have giant size issues. Uh, where they feature four old stories and one new story from popular heroes or anti-heroes. Think of somebody big in the DCU. Uh, I know Loon... No, no, that was it. Teen Titans Go had one. Batman, Superman, Swamp Thing. Uh, The villainesses of the DCU had their own giant a while ago. And Aquaman Giant has his out, issue number two out this week. Again, five stories, one new, four reprints. What's great about it is that they cut to the action. If you want just want action, this is a great little primer because you're not going to deal too much with the backstory of who's who or why did they not get along or blah, blah, blah. It just jumps right into the action. We picked up Flash Giant number one a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago even. And... We really liked it because we don't know much about Flash, but we like the the character, if that makes any sense. We don't know anything about him or his villains, for the most part. But in theory, we also want to like him. And that's what the Flash giant did for us. It introduced him and a lot of his villains, and that's what Aquaman could do to you. Now, we do know both of these franchises very well, and the Power Rangers do a great job of teaming up with other superhero groups. This is issue number two of the Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Oh, yeah. It's on Boom Studios. Um, it retails for four ninety nine. And it's... Who was going to like this? If you're a Turtle fan, you'll like it. If you are a Power Rangers fan, you'll like it. And if you don't know enough, but you know a little bit about both of these superheroes, I think you'll like it because that's what's so cool. We, uh, we The Justice League and the Power Rangers, they had a team up about two years ago. And that was great. That still is a fabulous crossover that if you can catch it uh, on graphic novel form or collect all five or four of the comic books, that's a great little story. And that's what the Power Rangers do, because they are kind of an unknown entity, unless you really know the Power Rangers. You know the Power Rangers as a punchline, and kind of the the foe fighting and no dialogue, things like that. But the comic books, the comic books are a different deal, because they're on Boom Studios, and they are really entertaining. So you jump into this not knowing anything about the Power Rangers, but you'll enjoy it, because you'll see why they're so popular, and why they have more yeah, they have more street cred and they're a better a better representation in printed form rather than the TV version that you were watching as a kid. Yeah, it's contemporized, it's entertaining. Issue number two of this crossover is out this week. Now, if you're in middle school or older and you were a fan of Dogman. So follow me. Dogman, you know, the, the, the elementary-aged graphic novel that is bonkers and ridiculously entertaining. This graphic novel from Dana Sullivan is kind of the, the sole cousin, the sibling, as it were, 
to that with a twist. It's the Deadening. The Deadening. This is a Dead Max, Dead Max comic number one. And it's about a dog who dies almost immediately when the graphic novel starts. Max is the dog. And Derek is the youth. The seventh grade youth. And literally ten pages into the graphic novel, Max dies. <laughs> Where's the joke? There is no joke. That's the graphic novel. But it's interesting in the way they twist it because it's slightly left of center. And kids that age, kids that age in upper elementary through middle school, they're going to be okay with the the slightly black humor of dead pet humor. Like I remember being in, I was in junior high, and that was when the 101 things to do with a dead cat when that was all the rage came out. And if, you're, if you've never heard of that, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm triggered. Uh, it was a series of books that came out in the 80s, possibly early 90s, and you can find them in some, some black market bookstore now <laughs> because it's in really bad taste, and you really can't be a cat lover and dig it. That's kind of the same modus operandi that the deadening has, except with a little more respect. It, it's not cruel. It's loving, and it deals with how to handle and how to process the death, the death of a pet, even though in this case, Max didn't really die. He comes back from the dead, and not in a pet cemetery kind of way. It's in a goofy kind of way. It's fun, and as you can tell from the description, it's very left of center, but kids in upper elementary through high school will probably be curious about this enough to check it out. Something that kids that age, also that same age, upper elementary and up, they're going to have to read and learn about. There are three new graphic novels out. One on Albert Einstein, yeah, Charles Darwin, and Marie Curie. What do they have in common? They each have a new graphic novel out this week that takes a look, a snapshot, at their life and the things that made them famous. Uh, in Albert Einstein's book, for example... It deals all about his theory of relativity. A little bit about his backstory, Doofenshmirtz-wise, how he got to where he was, and then exactly what is the theory of relativity, how he came up for it, as well as some of his other background. Um, so it's not going to be exclusively for the steam-minded folks who just want to read about the theory of relativity, but if you're looking for a good primer on Einstein, what made him... What shaped his life and why he's so darn famous and shaped life as we know it today, it's going to be for you. The same goes for the, the version on Marie Curie. And that one, Marie deals with radioactivity. Yeah, she was one of the ones behind that. And Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution. Great stuff. And that both all three of these prove that graphic novels are so much more than, I'm kind of for you parents out there, if you're a parent out there and you think that graphic novels are just fart jokes and here's my dead dog, let's make jokes about him. It's not. Um, a lot of them can be really educational and incredibly entertaining. So where is your local comic book store? You say, if it's a new year, you're saying, I'm going to get my kid reading or I'm going to go back to the comic book store myself. Uh, comic book store locator. Just type that into any search engine and boom, you are about 10 miles away or closer from your local comic book store in person, or you can order them the old-fashioned way through the post office. Thanks for listening to Daddy Mojo. Be sure to tune in next time. For more information on any of the things we talked about today, just check out the website, daddymojo.net, or hit us up at Daddy Mojo on social media.